Hello fellow YouTubers, welcome back to YouTube Gaming Community number 137. So today's a really cool day, today is my son's five, he's five years old, today is his birthday. Tomorrow's really cool because we are going to Chunky Cheese, we are going to be playing arcade games all day, we're going to have a lot of fun. So, the state of the gaming community, this was inspired by Steve Benway's Friday Talkie Community Shrinkage and Game Formats. And in the video he talks about how he, you know, he has a website where he has a list of channels who make videos about retro games on YouTube and he found an alarming rate of people who either don't make retro game videos anymore or are no longer on YouTube. Now listen, let's be honest, our, the game community is always in a state of flux. Certain time retro games are growing, certain times retro games the community is shrinking, certain... There's so many different aspects of games that people do on YouTube now compared to over three years ago when I first started watching videos when it was just older generation gamers talking about retro games. Today people are talking about gaming news, their opinions on gaming companies, uh, about bills that are laws that are trying to be passed through, you know, legislations in different countries and people, you know, my opinion on my channel has always been simple. It is a, a gaming diary in a sense that this is my opinion about whatever gaming topic I talk about, whatever games uh, I pick up, I can go back and look at, oh, that's when I got that game, or whether it be my computer life or my arcade life, whatever, my opinion, experiences of that game and its history, that I can go back and watch it sometime if I want to. Since the implementation of the YouTube partnership program, the community has blown up and a lot of things have changed. Let's be honest here. It used to be before the partnership program, there was very few people making YouTube videos in the gaming community and a lot of people watching. Now it's everybody making videos and very few people just watching videos. That when a lot of people get into our community and start making videos, they find out how hard it is to, first of all, make videos on a regular basis, to get a lot of views, to get a lot of subscribers. Because a lot of people who I've talked to over the last year, a lot of them... There's a certain group amount of people who are like, oh, I just want to be a partner and I want to have a lot of views and I want to have a lot of subscribers. How do I do it? It's like, there is no secret formula, okay? Sure, YouTube and a lot of certain people in the community are pushing you need to be a high production value of videos and you need to do a high HD camera. And the truth is, the most important video thing about your videos is you, your personality, your opinion. The people who are passionate about gaming and like making their videos are the ones who are still around. The people who make this into a job, the people who make this into put so much pressure on themselves to either make videos at a certain time or have to look a certain way are always are most of the time unhappy. Because it should be about what you want to do. When you, you know, one of the misconceptions in our community is why should I make a video about that retro game because a million other people have made a video on that game because it is your unique unique opinion and it's you talking about it. The only time I have a problem really with people who make videos and opinions on games is when they strictly go by popular opinion on that game. That they're afraid to actually give their honest opinion because they don't want they don't want people to get upset. Now there are a lot of people in our community that one of the statistics that people don't keep track of is there are a lot of people in our community who stop their old channel and start a new one, right? A lot of people have done that. Some people go away for a while and come back. Our community is always going to be in a state of flux. The state of our community is there are more people actually coming into the community than are leaving. And right, we're at the time of year right now, I'll be honest, a lot of people are, are not making videos right now because they're busy because of work or the holidays. A lot of people leave because it seems that stuff always seems to happen to people this time of year where they have to leave. It's always going to be in a state of flux. Our tastes in gaming are always in a state of flux. Six months from now, I might be into play N N64. A year from now, I might be into the Wii U. I mean, who knows? We're all using different things. So what do you think the current state of our gaming community? One of the things that I do see what people talk about that does bother me is people have this perception there is a hierarchy in our gaming community. 
There are certain people influenced at the top, there are certain people influenced in the middle, there are certain people influenced at the bottom. The truth of the matter is, we're all equal in this community. Sure, we all have peers in this community. What I mean by peers is, when you first started watching videos on YouTube and you were going to start making videos, you saw a person that did you like the way they talked about games, or you liked their style, or their way they made the videos, and you mimicked your videos after them. And over time, you learned your style, your way to do your videos. That was you. When you first come in the community, more likely you're probably going to be drawn to a big channel because that's what everybody's talking about. That's what everybody's either liking or disliking. Somehow or another, you're going to come across the bigger channels first. But the longer you're in the community, the longer you find the channels you like. Doesn't matter how many views they have or subs they have or that. That doesn't matter. I'm not, I don't ever want to fit into one click in our community, to be honest with you. It's kind of like high school. I never want to fit in one click in high school. I sure don't want to fit one here. I don't care if I fit in the tire hopper click. I don't care if I fit in the lower. I don't care if I fit in the middle. I just like what I like, and that changes all the time. It's okay. What do you think about the state of our gaming community? I'm sure I'm going to probably talk about some things I missed in this video. Or if there's anything you think I need to talk about this state of the game community in the next video, by all means, leave a comment below. So, let's get into some other videos I saw in the game community over the last couple weeks that I found interesting. The next one is by Neo Phoenix, and it is Our Gaming Community Rant. What he talks about in this video is he hates how people in this community talk about, well, not hate, but he, he doesn't like how people in the community always talk about there's so much drama in this community. He goes, and he compares the, the drama in our community, so-called drama, to other communities like the Mac community and other stuff. And he said about how actual the our community really doesn't have that much drama. And that talking smack to each other in the community is actually a good thing and a fun. It's entertaining. The truth is, if things are peaceful or if there isn't something interesting going on, a lot of people are bored and that they wouldn't be interested in the community if it was everybody got along or if everybody didn't talk trash. I mean, one of the fun things in community is when two people are making video responses, talking trash about a game that one person likes or don't like, right? It's always fun to watch that every once in a while. But a really well done video. You should check it out. Next up is Big Daddy Darth Tag. Worst looking game and no use to you, but still cool. So if you have a game like that or you check out his video or make a video response, I can't think of one for me off the top of my head. Be honest with you. The 8 bit theater, 1,000 subscriber, thank you. This is simply one of the best subscriber thank you videos and slash shout out videos I've ever seen in our community. It is really a great video. He shouts out a lot of people who either, were, who either friended him, who helped him along the way, or who he liked their channels. It is a really, really well done video. Talking about community, Inner Ghost is Retro Gaming Community, Do They Know It's Christmas, the collab video. Now, he's done a collab video with the community before. He has a lot of people in this video singing little verses like he did in the past, but it's a holiday song this time around. And it is a really great video. There's a lot of great people in the community. Uh, the last person in the video is Retro Roadshow, and it's great to see him in a video, you know, since he hasn't been around lately on YouTube. But a great video. Next up, Blue Tonic 78, New Console, Old Memories. So in this video, he gets a NTSC Super Nintendo. Now, he grew up playing the PAL version, and he talks about his memories of that system. Really cool. If you're interested, check it out. Next up is TGA Polis, Christmas Memories 2011, where he talks about you know Christmas memories in from the past, specifically Warcraft, Warcraft 2, if you never played the game. Really cool. Uh, check that out. Next up is Nintendo Reviewers. Shoutouts number one, where he shouts out five channels from the gaming community and why he likes them. Some guy who has some name close to mine. I would disregard that shoutout, though. <sighs> Forget that guy. And next up, Tune In Game in Tune In Game Podcast. Welcome message to Tune In Game in Podcast YouTube channel. It's just a welcome message to the future podcast that he'll be doing. So if you're interested, check that out. And last but not least, Dog in My Lens, My Gaming Diary, Episode 12, where she only, not only does she talk about, you know, cool, you know, her pickups she got recently, like, you know, she got recently for the 3DS, the new 3D Mario Land game, and Mario Kart 7, and in Canada you got exclusive 
a thing for getting both those games. And more importantly, she has a code, a friend code in there for the gaming community to play Mario Kart 7 on the 3DS. So if you want to get involved with that and play with other people from the, our great community, check out the video, check out the code. And if also, if you want more different track codes, then Pete Dor put a, a video recently up on his channel also. So let's get to some of the comments from YouTube Gaming Community number 136, where I talked about does YouTube influence game sales? And the first one is from Alpha Omega Sin, and he said, I definitely think that YouTube can affect game sales for numerous reasons. People go to YouTube for gameplay videos to see how it plays. They go there for people's reviews for it, etc. Also considering how big the gaming community on YouTube is and how consistent people are checking on stuff, stuff out and uploading, etc., it makes sense. Which is true, I think. I think the people can more influence you on YouTube to buy a game than not. Which, by the way, Alpha Mega Sin, I've seen his uh, PS Vita uh, ramp video, and I will be making a response about uh, first party accessories. Hopefully, get to this week. Next up, Pocket Amigo. Stay strong, bro. I know your pain. We're all just sad, pitiful crackheads. And I was talking about how I went to a GameStop, my wife, and how I, I can't buy games through Jan January. And, you know, again, it's like a crackhead going to a crack house. <laughs> Game reviews on YouTube completely affect what I buy. It is most more important factor, no, but it is an important aspect of my decision-making process. And, yes, I did discover games I had no idea. Here is a great case. Skylanders got a sale because I thought... I did not like it, but I loved the idea of it. Then I started seeing some fun reviews of it by adults who made me realize it's a fan, fun game for kids and adults. Which, by the way, I have seriously thought about buying that game, and I would have never thought about it. But seeing people talk about it and seeing videos on it, that is a game that I'm probably going to pick up at some point. Supremo Pete said, If you look at the success of Minecraft, I would say yes. The game would never be as big today without the YouTube gaming community. And I'll be honest about Minecraft. I think it, Minecraft would have not have done as well. I think it would have been a success, but I think it would have been like a small success. Not the big success it is today. Because when you see a video of that game played, you want to play it. It's like Legos for adults in a way. There's more to it than that. But when you watch a video of it, it's it's... If you like to create things and you like to build, that game is going to appeal to you. And, it, and people would have never found that if it weren't for videos of people talking about and showing that game. And lastly, Bravo20007 said, Some good points. I do think YouTube does affect sales. I personally always follow new games. I like the look of YouTube for new gameplay footage reviews and being able to actually see what it looks like. I have bought more games than I normally would because of checking out footage on here. And I do, I do, for me more of the RPGs, like PS3 RPGs is what I usually see that I'll buy that I didn't know were out because I love RPGs. But when I see a game, like for example, I watched all the VGA trailers, right? And of course I was most hyped for the, uh, you know, Fall of Cybertron new Transformers game. That trailer looks awesome. But when I see people playing games that I've never seen before, it's like, wow, I want to play that game. It looks really cool. Now, some people said that they don't think it affects game sales, that they think people are going to buy it anyway, that I do think it's wrong. I do think if you watch this community, games like Decimals and stuff would have not even been noticed if it weren't for this community. Older games like Steel Battalion, People would never have known that game if they've never seen videos on it. Because you're never going to see that game in the wild. It's so big and bulky. I've never seen that game in the wild. And I think that's where YouTube helps people see games they would never see if it weren't for the fact that somebody showed it in a video. Anyway, that's all for now, guys. We'll do another community video next week.